Will robo taxis render Uber and its 8.8 .8 million worldwide workforce useless? What is happening? What is a robo taxi? Well, this is an app in which you just enter your address, the place to be picked up, and the place you want to go. And a robo taxi, not driven by anyone, but automatically driven, comes up to your doorstep. You get in and then close the door. It starts driving you on its own to your destination. No driver, no manual intervention involved, everything automatically done by the car. Well, what is the problem with this? Well, the problem is, first of all, if this becomes the norm, then Uber would probably not need that many drivers. Uber could just as well switch to the robot taxis and modify their app so that these taxis can go and pick them up. So again, this is AI, this is robotics, this is automation. And this would also mean the 8.8 .8 million global Uber drivers would be rendered useless. Is it true? Well, there are nuances here. It's not going to be completely wiped out. There are lots of places where you need manual intervention. These robot taxis are you know, limited in what they can do. At this point of time, there's only a few areas where robot taxis can drive without the help of a human. And there's a, a fair amount of expectation on how road rules are going to be followed by people all around you. That makes the robot taxi's life a little bit more difficult. But we thought we'll do a deep dive into whether robot taxis are going to render Uber and its driver force useless. And the answer is a little bit nuanced. You'll have to watch this thing till the very end. But there is going to be a dent on the Uber workforce. That's the conclusion. Let's take a quick look at what it is that it involves and how this is affecting day-to-day -day life. Also, I'm hearing that the cost of robo taxis is quite low, about 20,000 less than what you would buy an electric vehicle for, for example. And that means that a high amount of automation has gone into making these robo taxi cars. And we'll take a look at that also. This is huge and I'm also hearing that the cost of using robo taxi is only about 25% of what it would cost if you used an Uber with a driver. And that's a compelling reason for you to use your robo taxi, assuming that the robo taxi is not going to crash and burn. That's a big assumption, of course. Let's take a quick look at the economics and whether this is going to become a reality anytime soon. I have to tell you that some cities are allowing robo taxis in the Silicon Valley as we speak. So, a small infographic that compares the two and checks and gives us an idea where companies like Uber are headed. There are other companies too. We're just taking Uber as one sample. This could affect any app-based software services that are being used to drive you around any country in the world. So, again, it's a small infographic. I request to all of you to please like this video. And if you've not already subscribed to our channel, do subscribe to our channel. Here we go. Who was Parashurama, who led a life of devotion, dedication and daring? Why did he take birth on the earth? Was it to eradicate corrupt Kshatriya rulers who had become tyrannical and oppressive? Or was it to bestow daya for the needy? The scale of disruption of Uber's traditional model, that is 8.8 .8 million drivers as of now, this could be huge because there are many things here that are at play, many moving parts. So what are the main things? The robot taxis are also called as autonomous vehicles, meaning like they don't need any driver intervention. They can disrupt the 8.8 .8 million driver ecosystem. And this is just, I'm talking about Uber. There are many other car companies also. So there are a lot of things to look at. A total of 8.8 .8 million drivers worldwide for Uber alone. But there are other app-based services that could also get affected. First thing is, there are two things that are happening. First is like Waymo, which is a robo-taxi company, 100%. Its cautious, proven approach contrasts with Tesla's ambitious vision-based scaling plan. So you have two different groups here already, Waymo and Tesla. Waymo is based out of uh, Silicon Valley, if I remember correctly. And I think it is now owned by Alphabet or Google. I'm not 100% sure about that. You may want to check that. It doesn't matter. Waymo is quite liquid in terms of operational 
readiness and so on. They are running robot taxis even as we speak. So the economic driver, first thing is that the driver's salary goes out of the window. So if you take a look at this donor chart here, out of 100% expense, driver salary forms 75% and 25% is the Uber platform fee and other overhead. So basically, if a driver takes you from place A to place B, he gets $75. I mean, assuming that the, the fare cost was $100, he gets $75 and $25 goes to Uber to maintain all the software and other things behind it. Now, what is going to happen is if Uber were to continue in this way, this can easily end up being a closure, assuming that Robotox has become really, really efficient. But let's go back and take a look at this other chart here, the cautious leader versus Tesla ambitious leader. So there are five points that you need to look at. Scaling potential and vision only AI, that those are the strengths of Tesla, whereas Current deployment, regulatory approval, and tech, L-I-D-A-R-H-T maps. These are all the things that Waymo is kind of ahead right now. Although Tesla has the breadth and the technology to get ahead of Waymo, we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. That's just the EV battle of robocars or robotaxis. Let's take a look at what Uber has to do. Uber is looking to pivot from being a competitor to a platform. Rather than fight the trend, Uber is becoming the operating system for all mobility. Its strategy is to partner with autonomous vehicle developers and integrate their fleets into its existing app. So, like I said, you know, in, so you would look at Uber and then they may have an option, you want a robot taxi or you want a manually driven taxi or sometimes it might decide based on the destination you are choosing whether only one option is available. So what are the different things? Uber's platform could be used as a platform because it's got an installed base of millions of apps by companies like Waymo and Lucid slash Neuro. This is a strategic deal. Lucid is a car. Nvidia Stellantis in which Stellantis is the auto company and Nvidia is the one that provides the technology. This is a proprietary fleet. So there are many other options and I'm not even talking here about Tesla. Tesla is not even looking at this. Tesla is a competitor to this with its own scaling technology and so on and so forth. So there are limits to how you can use robotaxis. Here are the things that are a challenge. Human drivers will be there because the transition is not an on-off switch. Full automation faces significant real-world barriers creating a continued need for human drivers. For example, what happens on a road if lane markings go away, a part of the way, I mean the lane markings are there for some time and then the lane markings go away. Or if there is a sudden natural calamity and the road gets blocked for some reason, what happens then? So there are many such problems that could plague this robot taxi concept. So let's take a look and I would call all of these as probably edge cases like, you know, that happens not all the time, but it can happen. First edge case and complexity is autonomous vehicles struggle with complex unstructured events. For example, severe weather, road closures, uncooperative pedestrians or specific rider requests. Uncooperative pedestrians could be those who are not following the lights and they are just crossing wherever they want. These things can throw a robot taxi off the track and God forbid, it, this could also lead to accidents. Next, there are only some routes that are robo-taxi friendly and these are called as dense and simple wealthy areas. The reason wealthy because whenever you have a wealthy neighborhood, the roads are wide, they are laid out clean, the roads are maintained well, you have markings. It's just an assumption, okay? But this is one of the things where it makes it easy for a robo-taxi to navigate the street signs and so on and so forth. Also, they are not yet economical for suburban, rural or developing markets. I mean, outside of United States and Western Europe, perhaps this is going to be a problem. Third, regulatory hurdles. What kind of regulations do you need to have in order for robot taxis to ply safely on our roads? Scaling fleets requires a slow and complex state and federal approvals, limiting the speed of deployment even when the technology is ready. Now, what is going to be the future? Perhaps a hybrid fleet. 
current fleet is completely human driven but a hybrid fleet could be something where it's perhaps about 60 percent robo taxis and 40 percent human drivers again these depend upon what are the places where this thing is going to fly if it's going to be a developed country with well laid out roads and well marked pedestrian crossings and things like that robo taxis would be a good fit but if it is haphazard or if you're going to any downtown these are going to be a huge problem and again you can't really say that you will only ply on wide streets and not in a crowded area so what happens if the road is under construction part of the way you have all the lane markings and then the lane markings are being laid down what would a robo taxi then do would there be diversions in the software that will help the robo taxi to navigate around these things and if that is something that is unscheduled would that put the arrival time in jeopardy which means the traveler could essentially or potentially miss a flight or a train all these things are to be considered at this point of time it looks like a nice concept right you know i wouldn't jump on a robot taxi right away i would wait and see how this developed in fact i have a tesla which had autopilot it was a little nervous driving that letting the car to do the navigation because the software in tesla expects you to keep your hands on the steering even if it is piloting it will do lane change it will accelerate past cars behind and forward and so on and so forth it, just, it would do just about what you expect you would do at the same time there are places where it seems to miss out for example if it wants to change the lane and the other lane cars are not obliging then it gets into a bit of a problem so there are some limits to how far robo taxis can also navigate thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to our channel don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications namaskar